We've been getting quite a bit of rain over the past couple of days, and we're supposed to get some more over the next couple of days. But that's actually kind of a good thing, because it's allowing me to, I guess, troubleshoot and try to figure out where the water's getting in, exactly what the issues are. So when the top is down, that's when I'm getting water on this side of the canvas, like I talked about in the last video pretty extensively. And that's an issue, like, because a lot of the time I'm going to be traveling, I'm not going to be able to put the top up, and I don't want to have water coming in here uh, when the top is down and I'm just trying to be in stealth mode. I know, everybody points out that that's not stealthy, I get it, this is a camper, it's not as stealthy as my NV200 was, but uh, I'm still going to definitely stealth camp in it and pull on the side of the road and just sleep in it uh, and then move on the next morning like I've always done, and, but I won't be able to do that if I have massive amounts of water coming in if it's raining outside, so... That's priority number one for today. I picked up this Dicor lap sealant this morning from Camping World, and I'm going to go to town on the roof. Fingers crossed, it takes care of this problem. Trying to get the top down and lined up appropriately like this is definitely the hardest part, you know. If you're using this thing to go camping every once in a while, it's just part of it. it comes with the territory, it's an older camper, but when you're trying to live out of it and do this almost every day, it's a, it's a huge pain in the butt. So it rained all night last night, check this morning, and the canvas was perfectly dry. And I thought for a second that what I did with that die core yesterday actually worked and fixed the problem and I was all excited and I felt really relieved and I started talking to the camera about it, but I'm not going to show any of that to you guys because I put the top down, I put it up to take care of something and then I put it down to get ready to do another project and sure enough, it started raining again and now I have a bunch of water inside the canvas. I think the issue is that just the roof is all warped and bent out of shape, like I talked about a little bit yesterday, and it's impossible to get it lined up perfectly when you bring it down. You have to be extremely mindful of exactly where it is. That's kind of, that's kind of an issue, you know. It makes it so that using this camper with the top down, which is how I intend to use it pretty frequently while I'm on the move, is going to be really hard if it starts raining. Even a little bit of moisture is enough to drip and run into this canvas and get it soaking wet in here. It's getting to the point where I'm running out of patience. And I, you know, I will say that I did look at a newer camper last week. I went and just put my eyes on one and got to, got a feel for it. And obviously it's a lot nicer. It has a lot more, you know, comforts and is, is modern and, and doesn't leak. So like those are, are good things. I'm just, I'm at this point where it's like, what am I doing? You know, at this point, this camper is a loss. It's sunk cost fallacy. Like, I'm not going to get back even close to what I bought it for. I'm, a, I'm at peace with that. It is what it is. You know, I definitely overpaid for this. I didn't recognize some of the exterior issues that were going on with it, and I bought it. And now I don't feel comfortable selling it for what I bought it for, knowing that there are other things that need to be addressed. This camper is a good project camper. It's great for someone like the previous owner where it's just in their yard and they're tinkering with it and then they take it camping a few times a year with their family. But for someone that's trying to make this into a home and actively live in it at the moment, literally right now, that is getting to be really frustrating. So it has been a few days since I last filmed anything, 
and I have made a decision regarding this camper. I have decided that I am going to uh, move on from it and get a new camper. I've placed a, a deposit down on one at a local RV dealer. I'm excited to show it to you guys at some point in a future video. And this one I will be putting up on consignment at that RV dealer. And if anyone is interested in this camper, I know I've detailed a lot of the issues that it has. Uh, but feel free to send me an email, nate at el.life, if you are interested. And I can hook you up with that dealer in New Hampshire. And... Uh, I'm going to be selling it for substantially less than I bought it for. I just, I do not feel comfortable asking what I bought it for, you know, and trying to sell it for that price. When I bought this camper, I did not realize some of the exterior issues. I completely missed them. The interior is in excellent shape. The previous owner did a great job building out the interior, but there are definitely some problems on the exterior that could lead to f future potential issues. And then obviously the, the main thing that I've been dealing with, with the canvas getting wet when it rains, I just, I am not in a position that I want to tear this thing apart and start dealing with those issues. I don't want another project guys. I've been doing a lot of projects over the past so many years between the tiny house and the van builds and everything in between that. And I just, I would like a break from that. I just want a safe, comfortable, dry, reliable camper that I can use for years to come. And that's not to say that I don't expect the new camper to have some issues. The bottom line is RVs are not very well built and I am almost definitely going to have some issues even with a brand new RV. But that being said, I'm just hoping that it's a little bit fewer issues than what I've had and will continue to have with this old camper. So next I want to address some concerns and, and some things that I noticed in the comments in last week's video. You know, I, I really appreciate you guys for reaching out and for expressing your concern and worrying about me and for following along and watching these videos. Some of you guys have been following along for so long and I am very, very grateful for all of you guys and I love you guys. And I, uh, I feel like I haven't really explained much about what's going on over the past the past few videos, I've definitely missed some things and I apologize for that. My goal here is to just kind of try to fill you guys in. I'm just going to be talking to the camera like this for the next few minutes, but I guess the first question that I noticed is where is Shannon? And that's a good question. Shannon is currently in New Mexico. She's still on the property out there uh, working on a few last minute things, getting it ready for winter. Our plan is to meet up in Florida in a few weeks. We're actually going to be spending the holidays down there with her family and my family as well. They're going to be coming down for a few weeks in December, and I'm really looking forward to that. Very, very excited about it. And then we're actually going to be going on a family trip as well with her family, and I'm looking forward to that as well. So uh, that's pretty much what's going on with that. Shannon was originally planning to come with me on this trip to New England. We had been planning this for a while. Uh, but Shannon has also been traveling a lot, and she's pretty burnt out from traveling back and forth to San Francisco for work. So we decided just to, to wait, and she's just going to get to meet my nephew for the first time in Florida. But th that is the whole reason that I'm here, right? Like, I wanted to meet my nephew for the first time and spend time with my family, who I hadn't seen for about a year. And, uh, you know, it's been really great being able to spend time with them. This is the perfect time to be in New England. And I kind of decided to buy this camper. And I know I, I think I made a, a comment in the last video about how everything I own is with me. Uh, and that's just because I brought everything I own with me. You know, I brought my surfboard and my golf clubs and I've been able to play a lot of golf and surf while I've been here. If I had flown here, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And that was a big reason why I really wanted to drive. And, you know, I saw this camper online. I thought it was the perfect opportunity. Unfortunately, it didn't work out like that. The next thing I want to address is the property in New Mexico. Uh, it does seem like there's a little bit of confusion about that. Uh, folks seem to think that we bought that property to like live out there long term and, and basically kind of settle down there. Uh, that That is not the intention for that property. In fact, I don't even technically have any ownership of that property. Shannon is working with an investor out there. Uh, the investor basically fronted the capital for the property and Shannon has given some of her time and obviously I have as well to help try to maintain it and build it up. 
that property is strictly an investment. The goal is for it to be like an off-grid retreat. There's going to be numerous different structures on it. There's the cabin there now, obviously the tiny house, and then anything else that we add down the line, possibly some campsites as well. And the goal is to, to rent them out as like little vacation rentals. It is in a relatively touristy area. It's a really beautiful area. And uh, there are similar properties like that around. So uh, it seems like a pretty good investment opportunity. And that is what it is. It's, it's an opportunity. Shannon and I want to pursue opportunities when they are presented to us. And this, this was something that came up and, you know, we're very, very excited about it. We've enjoyed doing it. Eventually we'll move on to the next opportunity. And hopefully between the two opportunities, we'll be able to travel a little bit and live out of the new camper that I'll be picking up. And it'll provide us with uh, with at least a part-time home while we're in transition. But you know, we're just, we're not opposed to, to trying new things and, and working on developing properties like this. And I think that's going to be something that we're going to do for years to come. I did also notice in the last video in the comments that there seemed to be a little bit of a sentiment of, you know, that, that I don't really know what I'm doing and that I don't have a plan and that I'm all over the place. And I can definitely understand why folks would feel that way. You know, if you've lived a traditional life and you had a mortgage and you lived in the house for 30 years and you paid off the mortgage and so on, like... I could understand why you would look at my life and be like, you know, that guy's all over the place. And hey, to an extent, I kind of am, right? Shannon and I are open to different things. Like I've already said in this video, we're not going to shy away from change. And if there seems to be a good investment opportunity, we are going to pursue it. Uh, so that all being said, you know, when you look at some of the things that I've done, like I bought the NV200 and then I fixed it up and I lived in it for almost two years and then I sold it. And then I bought the High Ace and did the same thing all over again and I sold it. And then I bought the Tiny House Shell and I spent a good portion of this year fixing it up and building it out. And well, a couple of weeks ago, I did sell it. I, I sold it to the investor of the property in New Mexico that I was telling you guys about. Uh, it just made a lot more sense for them to have ownership of the tiny home. It was technically fully mine. All the money that went into it for the most part was my money. And obviously I put most of the, most of the time into it as well, uh, building it out. So it just made a lot of sense to, to sell it to them so that they could then rent it out as a vacation rental alongside the cabin. Regarding you know the NV200 and the High Ace and the tiny home, the bottom line is I spent a lot of time on those conversions and during the time that I had them they continued to go up in value and I ended up selling each one of them for substantially more than I had invested in it while also still having a place to live in for uh, at least a little while. So for me it's just building wealth that's really what it all comes down to with that money that I sold the tiny house for, like I said, I will be buying the camper, but that only is a small portion of it. The rest of it will go into, uh, you know, high yield accounts and I'm going to invest it and save it for the future. At some point, I think it's totally possible that I will buy a small piece of land somewhere out, you know, rural area, similar to the whole New Mexico thing that Shannon and I could possibly build a little cabin on and, and go from there down the line, possibly rent that out, do an Airbnb kind of thing or whatever it may be. Uh, but that's in the future. I guess I, I create these videos, even though they might be a little all over the place. The, the goal with this channel is to just to just show that there is an alternative way to live. You know, you don't have to live the traditional way of, you know, getting a, a mortgage and, and paying it off for 30 years and living in the same place and working a traditional job. There are other ways to earn income. There are other ways to build wealth. And um, I hope to show that in the future on this channel. And you know, I'm not saying that it's wrong to do it the other way. I think the traditional way is totally fine if that makes you happy. For me, I'm just open to exploring different things, and I think the same applies for Shannon as well. I hope this video clears up some of the confusion from the last video. Again, I apologize for creating that. I didn't really explain things too well, and I, I can see how some folks might have jumped to some of the conclusions that they jumped to. But, yeah, I guess that's kind of where we are with all of this, and... Looking forward to getting the new camper and getting back on the road. Hopefully being able to travel for a couple of weeks on my way back down to Florida. And then maybe taking some trips around Florida as well. Exploring there for a couple of months during the winter. And then obviously uh, making our way back out west in the spring. So, you know, it should be, a, should be a fun couple of months. I'm really looking forward to it. As always, I can't thank you all enough for watching and for following along on this journey. I'll talk to you all in the next one.